So basically, I'm just going to be going over um, asymptotes, vertical and horizontal only, um, because they're the only ones that I do in the IV. Um, I take IV anticipated SL, and I'm going to be taking my exams in November 2015. Um, I always get confused between vertical and horizontal asymptotes, so I'm just making this video to just basically look back on, and I'm just going to be starting from the very beginning. So basically, reciprocal functions are these, and they're the most basic rational functions. So I'll just copy that into where I'm working. Um, so, oh, so f of x is equal to k divided by x, where k is constant. Now basically, if you take a few examples, per se 1 over x, 2 over x, 3 over x, the graphs will all look like this, right? Whoop, that's an inverse, sorry. It the the difference between this and this is basically just the distance in between here. It increases as the numerator increases, but the vertic the horizontal and vertical asymptote the horizontal asymptote is zero. And the vertical asymptote is zero because no matter how far this line goes it'll still never touch the um, y-axis and that's why it's zero and this can be also called the limit now basically if you add a number at the front, oh man, sorry, if you add a number at the front, say 1 over here to the equation, if you've done uh, translations before and, uh, yeah, translations, you'll know that if you add a number, what it does, it moves these up. So basically what the new graph will look like is this. And the vertical asymptote will stay the same. The vertical asymptote will be 0, but the horizontal asymptote will be changed to 1. And this is because we added a 1 here. Now, just keep that in mind when we go and do the following rational functions. So basically, the equation for the rational functions is fx equals ax plus b over cx plus d. It's It looks complicated, but it's just a, b, c, d. It's really not that hard. So basically, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> now, to figure out the vertical asymptote, what we need to do is you just make the denominator equal to zero. So all you'll need to do to solve that is x plus 1 equals 0, therefore x equals negative 1, and that is your vertical asymptote. That's very easy. Oh, oh man. Um, now, if you remember above, if we have this, then the graph can either go up or down, and it just shifts itself up. So the line can either shift up here or down here, the asymptote. Now, if you, where's it gone? Whoop, where's it gone? Now, if you think about this, this function does not have anything here. That means that because still, vertical asymptote is negative 1. We'll plug that in here. Trying to make a dotted line. So if it goes like this. It means that because there is no extra number here. This horizontal asymptote 
won't move places. It, it'll basically just stay here and uh, that's where it remains. And that's basically just a difference between horizontal and asymptote and I usually get really confused so I'll just do a few more practice questions. So um, if it's y equals 4x plus 1, you just ignore that. <laughs> if there's no x at the top, just ignore that for now. And so the vertical asymptote will be negative 1 and the horizontal asymptote will be 0 because there's nothing here, so it's just plus 0. Let's try another one. Y equals negative 2 over x minus 5. So the vertical asymptote will equal 5 and the horizontal asymptote will equal 0. Whoop. Let's do one with the horizontal asymptote. So y equals negative 2 minus x, oh, divided by x plus 3. So the vertical asymptote will be 3 and the horizontal asymptote, oh, got to plus the 2. And the horizontal asymptote will be 2. Now if we go to graph that, I don't know how to move this man. If we go to graph that, what it'll look like is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4. Okay, so what it would look like is we go to here and score and join the vertical asymptote, so over here. And then the horizontal asymptote, 1, 2. And that's just basically what that graph looks like. It's honestly not that hard. And what I always do to remember is, all right, for vertical asymptote, you always it's always going to be x equals. And for horizontal asymptote, it's always going to be y equals. And how I remember that, mine is actually a really odd way, but I will tell you because it works. I link these two letters and these two letters, so I always remember vertex and Henry. So when I'm going to write vertical asymptote, I know that the next letter is going to be x because of this. And same with horizontal asymptote. It's just a way I remember you don't have to use that at all. And I suggest you don't write this for any of your tests. But yeah, um, hope that helped.